Having a cat is great and offers immense rewards for people who have them. I have three of them and I would never give them up. But if you are new to cats and you are trying to adopt one and you're doing your research and you're going to websites and looking things up, there are a few things that people generally do not tell you. Sure, they cover all the essentials, their food, their space, their litter box, having two instead of one. But in this video, I'm going to cover six things that I think you should know that generally are not covered in these kinds of videos and websites. I want to bring it up because I think expectations are really important to the relationship you have with your cats. And the more your expectations are associated with reality, the better that relationship will be. My name is Francisco and on this channel, I work with my three cats, Calypso, Skyfall and Mr. Muffin to help you improve the lives of your cats. Look at all the hair on my clothes. What am I going to wear to work? Why does my cat insist on scratching the sofa when she has a perfectly good scratching post? Our new cat has been hiding under the sofa for three days. What did I do wrong? These types of questions are common for new cat owners. First, cats will shed more than you think. I know that sounds obvious, but it's not always clear exactly what that means. What it means is that cat hair will get on your clothes and on your stuff. So before you get a cat, consider in addition to its personality, its age, its health, and all the other things that you're told to consider, consider its coat color and the length of its hair. If you like to wear black clothes or dark clothes, do not get a white cat with long hair. Second, get one of these tape things. It will be your best friend and you will use it constantly. Just know going in that hair will be an issue. So do not get upset when you see cat hair on your stuff. It's just what they do, especially in the spring and summer when they're shedding their winter coat. Oh, and I forgot to mention that cats love to sit on things. When, so when you've ironed something and just laid it out to wear for the evening, that's where they will sit. Yes, you can brush them and you should brush them, but it will never be enough. Cat hair will always be a thing. Here's the second thing. When you prepare to get a cat, you're told to get a cat scratching post so that it won't scratch your furniture. But you are not told how to make that cat scratching post effective. Here, in my opinion, are the three key things to success. Number one, stability. Your post should not wobble. This is why cats like to scratch sofas and armchairs. They are not wobbling. Second, height. The cat scratching post should be tall, or if it's a horizontal one, it should be long. Cats will like to stretch out when they scratch, and if they can't stretch, it's not very satisfying. So these short, wobbly posts that they sell, Forget them. Yes, they're cheaper, but in my opinion, they're also mostly useless. Third, location. Put your cat scratching post in a high traffic area. Do not put it in the back room. It will not get used. Put it in a place that they go by all the time. And if you see them rubbing up against a particular wall or a particular piece of furniture, that's where the cat scratching post should go. Look at my cat scratching post, and they have used it up. Look how torn up this thing is. In fact, I probably need to replace it. If I didn't have this post here, it would be my sofa arm that looked like this. And there's a lot more to say on this topic. I have a video on it, and I will link it in the description below. Now let's talk about sleeping. When you're preparing to get a cat, you might go to the cat store or the pet store, you buy a nice bed for it, something cute that matches uh, the rest of your furniture, you pick out a nice place for the cat to sleep, and when you bring your cat, you introduce it to its cat bed, and your cat walks away or runs and hides under the sofa. In short, your cat completely ignores its new bed, and you're devastated. You just spent $30 on buying that bed. Here's the thing. For the most part, cats will choose where they want to sleep. And in general, they will also move around periodically, going from one spot to another. There are exceptions, but most cats do this. So here's the thing. Instead of trying to make them sleep in a particular place, see where they sleep, 
and make that spot more comfortable. Put the cushion there and everyone will be much happier. Talking about happiness, you bring your cat home from the shelter and the first thing it does is run under some piece of furniture. You envisioned it maybe walking around, sniffing at things, and eventually jumping on your lap and purring as you pet it. And this is not uncommon vision because we see a lot of that in the videos and the cat videos we watch. Cats sitting on laps and purring. But instead, your cat is hiding under some piece of furniture, making itself as small as possible in the farthest corner and looking at you as if you were some kind of rabid raccoon. Thoughts race through your mind. Why is it acting like this? Is there something wrong with the cat? Did I do something wrong? No, you didn't do anything wrong. Most cats are afraid when they are in new environments. Two factors contribute mostly to this, their age and their level of socialization. Kittens will adjust much more easily than older cats. And the more experience they've had with other animals, other people, other situations, the, the more easily they will adapt to your home. So what to do? Give it time. Keep it company, let it get used to your presence, get down to its level, give it some treats, give it some playtime. And in a few days, most cats will start coming out and start getting used to your new home, to their new home. Now, unlike dogs, most cats want and like to climb. And if you do not prepare places for them to climb, they will find their own. It could be counters, it could be tables, it could be furniture, it could be holes in the wall. Now you might be able to train them not to jump or climb on one or two things, but conveying the general idea that climbing is not allowed is not a thing. Now cat people know this, but many people new to cats do not. I once had a friend who saw one of my cats sitting on top of a chest of drawers. And she said, poor thing, who put the cat up there? And I had to explain that the cat got up there all on its own and it could get down anytime it wanted. She just didn't realize that because she never had a cat. But I'm not making fun of people's lack of familiarity with cats. I've made many mistakes with dogs. My sister has two little dogs. And one time I went, was visiting and she put one of them on my lap. After a while, it seemed to me like the dog wanted to get down, so I gave it a little nudge, expecting that it would jump off like a cat would. But it didn't. It just sort of flopped over and fell on the floor. I didn't know that it wouldn't jump, so no disrespect intended. But back to cats. It's best to give them something to climb and have, something that you can approve of that they can get on top of. Most people have some kind of cat tree, or they have uh, window shelves, or other shelves that they put on the walls. We cat people call this kind of thing catification. I have a few videos with ideas and I will link them in the description below. Here's something else that people new cats sometimes are not aware of, and that is night activity. If you've never had a cat, you might not be aware of that they will roam around and be active at night, and at least until they get used to the rhythm of your household. This is particularly true of single cats and kittens. They get bored. They'll want to run around. They will try to get into the bedrooms. They will cry out. They will play with your feet. They'll wake you up early in the morning if they get hungry. This is just something that will normally happen with most cats until they get used to your rhythms. So what to do? Well, you can start by playing with them a lot at night right before you go to bed. This will tire them out a little bit. But eventually, in my experience, they get used to your rhythm and they will settle down. I have three cats and they never bother me at night anymore. They did when they were younger, but now they know when it's time to go to sleep and they do that. Maybe they roam around, but if they do, they never do it loud enough to wake me up. Now, I'm not discouraging anyone from adopting a cat. I think everybody should have at least two cats. But as I've said, I think everyone, including your cats, will be a lot happier if you know these things that we cat people assume, but people new to cats have not been told. And to help you out, I will link my latest catification video right here. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe.